Hello there, this is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority, and this is uh, the podcast, um, Healing Matters. And today we're going to talk about sleep concerns. Sleep concerns, or why can't I sleep, or I do sleep, but I want to sleep better. What is sleep? Why do we need sleep? What's the importance of sleep? And and often it's been said that actually the best supplement, the best health practice you could ever have is actually good sleep. Sleep um, is part of, it's designed in our brain. There are actually some studies that were done where they derive people of sleep. And when you derive people of sleep, it, it's very damaging. And you can brainwash people. That's one of the things that they use for brainwashing is to cause sleep deprivation. For instance, uh, what we know from, uh, for instance, in, let's say, concentration camps or uh, when you're a prisoner of war camp, what they'll do is, is let you fall asleep, but then they have some there watching you or they even have some monitors to kind of notice when that happens. And then they'll come in just as you fall asleep and they'll come in and bang a crack, you know, a, a garbage can or something like that and or punch you or something like that or make a loud noise. Um, and then what would happen is, is you'll come out of that and then you, and so they'll let you fall, almost fall asleep and then snap you out of it and then keep you. And what happens is over, like say a week to two week period, you'll tell them anything, you'll do anything just to make it stop. Well, there's a lot of people that this is their normal life, which is they're not being tortured by, you know, anybody, uh, other than themselves, other than their health, other than their circumstances. There's a lot of things that go into it. Inability to sleep well can be due to various factors, uh, such as dietary imbalances, eat, which is like eating too late before and going. We've all heard of the stories. Oh, you know, I had nightmares. I had, I ate too, you know, I ate, ate some bad stuff. And that's true too. You know, you can see which is you eat a food that doesn't agree with you or is too hard to digest, especially like red meat. Difficult to digest foods such as red meat, drinking too much fluids before the bed. Uh, where then I have to get up and go pee. That's another thing, which is, uh, is uh, what's the problem with the sleep is I can't fall asleep. I can't stay asleep. I get up. I get up because I'm restless. I get up because I have to go to the bathroom. I get up because I'm on pee, you know, or I'm in pain or all this other stuff. So drinking too much fluid before bed, allergies or reactions to certain foods, meaning <clears throat> you ate something that's causing, let's say, a... So let's get a good example. A person that says has a, a wheat intolerance, a gluten intolerance, and they eat the pizza or they eat, you know, something that... Ha or the pasta, then they're going to be sniffly all night long. They're stuffed up. They can't breathe. That's another thing that happened for people that can't sleep is if they're all stuffed up and constantly having to clear their throat or something like that, can't breathe very well, annoying, but also keeps you from falling asleep or having quality sleep or never being able to stay asleep long enough to get into what's called REM stage sleep, which is, stands for rapid eye movement, which is, has to do with what your brain does. Um, I'll get back to this, but let me describe what is sleep. Sleep is essentially your brain, essentially it's like the computer and the computer goes into the defrag mode, which is the healing mode. It's kind of like when you have a very busy, busy office, everyone goes home at night and then the cleaning crew comes in and the cleaning crew comes in and they take, you know, there's a bunch of a pile of this over here and there's a pile of this over here and they take it and they organize it and they put it together. And um, like even an assistant in an office will take and, and, you know, you go from the office and you've got papers lying all that came out of different files and they're scattered all over the place, which is if it's left like that, you come there the next day and you're like, where is this? Now you have some people that, that have what's called organized chaos, which is they'll say to the cleaner, listen, you screwed up my, my whole organization, which is, I know it looked like it was chaotic to you. Keep in mind, we're talking about the brain here. We're talking about how the emotions and brain and everything works. And there's some truth to that, which is certain types of brains, certain people are able to do task-oriented thing, which is it has to be in a file, and it has to be like going into a file. The A's are in the A's, and the B's are in the B's, and you can't have the Q's and the A's or anything like that. Otherwise, you get, you know, messed up. There are other people that like, and women tend to be a little bit more like this, which is men tend to be, but this can go back and forth, but men tend to be what's called task oriented based upon how their brain works, which is do this until it's done, then flip the page and go to the another one. Do this until it's done, then flip the page and go to another one. Women tend to have brains um, that are more of like 
just put it all out on the table and they overlap with each other. And, and like even in a conversation or an idea, they'll start something. Oh, that made me think think of that, which then this goes into this, this goes into that. That's kind of me. I do have this uh, where I remember where it was because of where I left it. And then it has to do with, oh, that's right. I, I was doing this and doing this. And so there is kind of a, a chaotic organization. But I've also learned too from my mother and from my wife and from other people and just from going to school and other stuff like that. It's, it's you know, you spend time trying to look for it, like just go to the file cabinet. And if it's in the A, it's in the A and put it back where it came from. So that's what the brain does when we sleep at night. The brain, especially good deep sleep where we're dreaming and things like that, is the brain um, tends to take disparaging things and, and it puts it back together, it organizes it. And then it also, you know, some of our dreams, including even nightmares, are our, our brain's way of sorting out what is the mess, sorting out what we can't figure out. I remember stories of my grandfather that, you know, like towards the end of his life, uh, he lived a little bit longer than my grandmother. Um, but, you know, towards the end, grandma would say they slept, <laughs> they were the people that slept in two separate beds or two separate bedrooms ever since I, you know, those old TV shows ever since I could remember. But grandma said, you know, before she died, about a year before she died, she said that she would hear grandpa in his room and he would be arguing about stuff. And it would be stuff that, like, he had retired, like, 30 years beforehand. Um, but it would be stuff in the workplace. And it would be stuff that, like she said, that he sounded like he was upset. And he was arguing. And it was, you know, and it was more of like a, a... But he would wake up that day. And that day would be a better day. Some days it would be worse because it's, he's kind of like, you know, it, it was annoying to him and it was bothering to him. But there are many days where it actually was better, meaning he sorted it out. He worked out the things that he couldn't work out in real life that were in the past or even that day. And the brain through, you know, this process puts you into this level and so that it can sort stuff out. And it's all about health. It's all about how your brain works. Your brain works better so that you don't have to carry all this baggage through you throughout the day. That's why when you're really well slept, the baby or the adult or anyone is like, I feel really good. And it's it's like it's bright and sunny and, and I don't get upset easily. I'm not triggered. All of these different things. So good sleep is is so important about the brain. It's also a thing when we get into REM state sleep, they, through brain monitors, there's different brain waves, alpha, beta, theta, zeta, all of these different types of things. And they have to do with different functions of how our brain works. Now, when we go into re normally, like when I'm talking right now, talking to you, or even if I'm just sitting here not talking at all, and you think that there's nothing going on in the brain, they can see that there's different brain waves. And so the alpha may be up here, and then the, the theta may be here. So when we're awake, they are all doing what they do and they do different things. Whereas at nighttime, when we get into that brainwave of the, the REM stage sleep, they all harmonize together. They all literally kind of line up together and your brain sings, meaning your whole energetic field sings and it hums. It's kind of like a purring cat. That's why cats purrs because literally they are, they're thumping their thymus, they're thump, thumping their pineal gland. We know scientifically is what they're doing is just, Essentially, they're meditating or they're REM stage sleeping while they're awake looking at you. And what they're doing is they're organizing their body, which is then stimulating good healthy hormones, the, the healthy hormones that help you to heal. And it's reducing the hormones of the stress hormones that are response to stress that we went through the day. So it really is rebuilding the machine. You sleep at night so that you can take it to the garage. You know, police cars or taxi cabs that get used a lot are actually very well maintained because they have a mortar, mortar pool. And so you can even have a taxi or, or like a, a, a cop car that has a lot of miles on it. And you'd think, oh my God, that thing's going to be a piece of junk. And actually they're not. If they have a good motor pool, they're really well maintained. And, uh, you know, they go into the garage every night. And they, and then every month they go through a deep, you know, type of thing. And so there's stuff that we can do with our sleep that does this. So some of the problems with sleeping is his allergy reactions during certain foods, drinking stimulants after 2 p.m., such as coffee, 
um, the Red Bull, anything with caffeine, even, you know, like tea and stuff like that has any caffeine in it. It can actually, yerba mate is a, oh, it's a great healthy tea, but it can, it has stimulant type of things. A guarana is another one of these different types of stimulant things. Sugar, um, lots of too much sugar. Um, reaction to food chemicals, such as what's called not natural flavors or what's called MSG, your Doritos. Um, Doritos and other you know, foods like that have what's called monosodium glutamate, which is a neurotransmitter stimulator, not only on the tongue, but on the brain. It irritates the tongue, which makes the tongue think like it's tasting things more, but it also irritates the brain. And so the brain can be really highly irritated. I know one of the top things for um, autistic or kids or, or people that are dealing with this type of stuff, like for instance, even let's say bipolar or it, take the MSG out and they hide it in a lot of foods and it's called natural flavors. They can say, well, it's a chemical. No, they, it, it, yes, it is a chemical, but it came from potatoes. It came from natural things. So this is how they're thieves and liars is that they go, well, it came from natural like a long time ago. So it's actually still considered natural. No, it's not. It's a way of tricking you of being able to say it's natural flavors. Aspartame, that's one of the, you know, it's the pink sugar. That's the um, Diet Coke. Uh, these types of things really, really super harmful in terms of their chemicals. And if you have people that do that over and over again, they are brain chemicals. That's how we, it tricks you into believing that it's sweet tasting. It's not really sweet on the tongue. In fact, it's bitter and yucky. If we didn't trick the brain, if you took those artificial flavors, the, you know, the aspartame or the, the, the phylonutrient, I can't even say it. It's in all like the gum and all this other stuff. It's this fake sweetener. Oh, sugar-free gum, good for your dental. Yeah, but bad for your brain, super bad for your brain, okay? Um, et cetera. A dietary deficiencies, low pH, meaning due to poor mineral status. If you don't have good minerals, if you've not replaced your minerals, with the adequate amount of salt, a good sea salt, and then we also, that's the sodium and plus a bunch of other stuff. We don't have enough magnesium. Magnesium is one of the top things, people who are really tight and they can't sleep. The muscles are tight because it's stuck in magnesium um, or it's stuck with not enough magnesium. Um, inadequate vitamins, not enough B vitamins, antioxidants, um, essential fatty acids, or inability to digest essential fatty acids. If you can't digest fat and eat enough fat, then your brain doesn't work and your nerves don't work and then your sleep doesn't work. And as I said, without proper sleep, you will die sooner. That's just the basics because if the, again, like the say, uh, the cop car or the taxi cab that does not get put into the garage especially the way they drive it. If you got one driver that's like, rrr, 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 you know, and really stopping, it's hard on the brakes. If that doesn't go into the garage, it will fall. That is a crappy car. That is a lemon. It is a nightmare because it will fall apart on you. <clears throat> and so uh, essential fatty acids are one of these things that if you can't digest it, you're not actually replacing your brain. Certain medications can inf in uh, interfere with normal sleep. They'll, they'll put it right on there and they'll tell you. I'm gonna get into how do we fix these things, but I'm going over the list of what are these things, what could be my sleep problems. Poor sleeping area. So you can have people that it's not their body, it's the area. Too hard or, you know, like the, the you know, um, oh, what is that fairy tale, you know, just right. The bed needs to be just right. I need a hard bed. When we go to hotel rooms, especially nice expensive hotel rooms that have that big fluffy pillow top, I can't sleep for crap because it hurts my back. I, I've had times where we went to Cancun and I had a bad back and it was this awesome room. It was beautiful, but the bed was like sleeping in a marshmallow. And like two days in a row, I finally just slept on the floor. I just took the blanket off and threw it on the floor. And I slept way better because the hard floor was better for my back. Um, you know, there's a bunch of different synthetic bedding materials. Um, again, it's always better to go natural cotton, and wool and um, uh, what is it? Uh, down, down filled pillows and these times they actually have, they don't carry as much static charge. They don't carry as much of this bad energy, literally. The synthetic, that nice fluffy, you know, synthetic blanket or the fake, fake fur blanket or the, you know, the things that, you know, the Ugg shoes or something like that. 
those synthetic fibers literally carry a lot of different charges. You'll see it, like you get very staticky clinging and it can really upset your body's brain waves. Um, uh, too much light in the room, um, noisy area, meaning there's too much noise going around. Um, too much light. That's why I recommend like blackout curtains, and we'll talk about that a little bit uh, later. Um, leaving a radio or TV on. Get the TV out of there. Get the radio out of there. It should be dark and quiet. And sometimes even people find cracking the window and making it cold. And heavy blankets. These are the things in sleep um, science that have shown, which is if you got problems and you really, really want to have good sleep, these are the things that... Our body responds to, our body, especially with the heavy blankets, they make these weighted blankets that you can use. Um, and it's very much like, um, you know, like babies. They found like babies, for instance, a colicky or a cranky baby that's crying all the time, that is coddled, or that is, for instance, like the, the papoose. So this is what the Indians do, you know, the Native Americans, they would put the baby on the back, and they would tie their arms down, and they would strap them down and then put them on their back. But it wasn't just so they could carry them around. It's because it made the baby feel more comfortable. It made the baby, the weight on it, the um, the pressure on it actually stimulates this. So in, in adult humans, the weight on the pillows or the weight on the blankets on your body actually stimulates the memory of the same. Like pick up a cat by the scruff of the neck and that cat, I don't care how old it is, it will go into like baby it will literally like, you know, start purring and, and literally it will go into, it makes it go into the memory of like when it was a little kitten or sometimes too, that's, that's the mating thing, which is when you see a cat, a male cat or tiger or a lion mate with the other one, he'll bite her on the back of the neck right there. And that makes her arch her back and that makes her go into a submission. Well, you know, whether you're boy or girl, that I'm using that as an example of the weight on the body stimulates something that our baby sense remembers. And our body, then our brain waves and our body's like, oh yes, I feel much better. And we are having a much greater propensity to kind of sleep really well, sleep like a baby. I slept like a baby, okay? Um, the high electromagnetic fields, the TV, um, those things can really, so even if you're sleeping, so I know people that sleep with the TV on and it's flickering, they say, it helps me sleep better. Even if you're sleeping with your eyes closed, that flickering light penetrates through your eyeballs and it's stimulating your eye and it's stimulating your brain. And your brain needs to have dark. It also needs sunlight exposure. So this is another thing. If we don't have enough sunlight exposure, and in, in, up here in the winter climates, we get seasonal affective disorder or SAD because we don't have enough light. Now, we can still do that here in, in Michigan and other normal climates in the, in the wintertime just by sit by a window. You know, during the daytime, sit by a window, take your glasses off, take your sunglasses off, and stare out the window. Basically, let the light come in into your eyes. And that helps to stimulate what's called the pituitary gland. The gland right inside your brain, and that's what also regulates the melatonin. Melatonin is a hormone that we produce. You can take melatonin, but you're supposed to produce your own melatonin. You produce melatonin at nighttime during REM sleep, and then when you make enough of that, then when you wake up during that daytime, that melatonin converts into serotonin and dopamine, which means it's happy. So if we don't, if we're depressed, it's can be related to an, not enough melatonin production, which we get through nighttime. But again, it's also related. These things are connected. The light and the dark are connected. And if you can't get the benefit from the dark, meaning the best sleeping should be from dark, but it comes from because you got exposed to the light. You had enough light that goes into your eyes during the daytime. You don't have to stare at the sun or anything like that. It's just enough of the sunshine to get in so that, that it will then make it so that your brain will produce that during the nighttime, okay? Um, internal infections, especially parasitic, can often become active at night, creating restlessness and loss of sleep. This is where we get the word lunatic. Lunatic stands for moon. M M Luna is moon. 
And I will tell you, any bar owner, any cop, anyone in public service, any paramedic will tell you they know the phases of the moon because when we get to the full moon, people go crazy. There are more fights, there are more deaths, domestic abuse, there's more alcoholism, that people really drink a lot and they fight and they have all kinds of things. One of the reasons why is, is, is it our brain or is it their brains? That's what's known. Because the other thing is, is parasites tend to hatch with the phases of the moon. So what that means is, is you'll get people where parasites will, um, when it's the new moon, where the, where the, the moon is, is, where you can't see it, okay? When the moon is dark, right? A full moon is a, a time when the parasites start to hatch. And the parasites start to hatch and they start growing and growing. And they secrete hormones that literally drive us to drink, drive us to be angry, drive us to fight, drive us to eat sugar because they want us to eat it to feed them. And so one of the real telltale signs of uh, not only you know, insomnia and sleeping problems, especially if you were to track them. So let's say a person said, I, you know, uh, it happens sometimes and it doesn't happen sometimes. At the, if they were to, like, for instance, a woman were able to track her period, just mark it down, put it on the calendar. And if over a number of months, three to four months, if you start to see that it fits the phase of the moon. So for instance, depression and fights and going on a bender and all of these things, if it starts to, or for instance, my insomnia, meaning I, at this time of the month, I can't sleep, then if it has to do with the phases of the moon, then a lot of times that's parasites that are, are active inside of you. And that's why you go through these cycles. So it's not just your brainwave cycles, it's these things. I'll talk about that, how do we cure that? Um, but that means you're infected. So one of the things, the last thing a person would think is that there's some sort of infection that's causing me to not sleep well. There's other infections like dental infections. Pain, pain anywhere in the body can worsen rest and sleep. A bad shoulder. I know people that I'm treating right now and it's like they're, you know, when the shoulder is bad or their back is bad, they can't sleep because it's like every time they turn, it hurts or they'll get comfortable, but then their body will relax. So if you got a bad shoulder, you got a bad hip, okay? It's out of place or it's got a lot of, tension in it or it, for instance it's got some scar tissue because you have an old injury on your shoulder and you before you go to sleep you go oh it kind of feels fine a little bit painful but really it's not bad take my pain medication or whatever you lay down and when you first lay down it's like oh there it's relaxed what happens is, is if we then fall asleep and let's say so your body when your body relaxes your shoulders relax and all this other stuff well, if the bone is being pulled on because it's tight, when you are up and awake, you're holding it in the place where it's not being pulled on. So it doesn't cause a pain sensation. When we fall asleep and completely relax, now the body relaxes and it, and, and it literally decompresses. And so now it starts to pull on that bone. And now it starts to send pain signals. So sometimes when people have some of these deep body stuff, the more relaxed they get, the worse it hurts. And then that wakes them up and then they have to move and they have to toss and turn and stuff like that. Thereby, they're always being snapped out. So it's very much like I said, that same type of thing. Pain or these other things is just like being tortured, which is if I only can sleep, let's say 15 minutes and then I wake up. Uh, sleep apnea is another one thing. Uh, you know, one of the, the big things is if you can't breathe at night, big sleep concern is I have sleep apnea. That's where we have sleep studies to... And they have them on your phones now, so um, you can find... And, but the telltale sign that we have apnea is your partner, your wife, your husband, your roommate, or somebody goes, you snore horribly. <laughs> I mean, you're really loud. And what's worse, you stop breathing. My dad was like this. And if we all stayed in the hotel, you know, it drove us all nuts because we would be like, Mom, kick him, kick him. Because there were times where he would stop breathing. It would be like, is dad dead? Did he die? Because it was like, he, it was almost like two minutes. And <laughs> then he'd start snoring again. And he was like, oh, thank God. And there were times where it would, and I was like, how do you deal with this, mom? And, you know, this was before we had the sleep apnea machines. My dad died before that even became really popular. But I think that's a big part of his his problem, his, his health problems is he had an untreated sleep apnea. And it was really, really damaging his health. Um... Toxicity, especially heavy metals from dental work.
okay? The dental, I talk about dental a lot because again, it can, it's right there in your brain, your dental, your teeth. So dental infection, which is gingivitis and also infection that can be buried under an old, let's say filling or an old filling that's actually a metal filling, what they call the silver filling, but it's actually 50% mercury. Um, mercury is like brain, okay? That's your brain. That's the Mad Hatter. That's why they call them the Mad Hatters because they put mercury in the brims of those hats and it's going right to your brain and it drives you nuts, drives you crazy, and then it eventually will kill you. But it can go over a long, long time, just subtle, just a little bit, the small poisoning of the brain, okay? Um, can create acidic poor pH and poor ability to rest or sleep. This is the toxicity of metals. Liver gallbladder, doctor, uh, liver gallbladder detox, that's the thing. This is when we have some of these things, what do we do about that? We can detox. Also, if you got bad dental, I've had many people where they've had really old, you know, uh, mercury fillings and, and a mercury filling and then a gold filling, which is the worst than anything else because they're two dissimilar metals and the acid of your, your saliva actually is what's called a, a, it's like galvanic, meaning it's it's a, you know how they clean um, jewelry? You know, when you put jewelry in that water and it bubbles and stuff like that, that's what's happening in, it's called electrolysis. So electrolysis can happen in a mouth with dissimilar metals. And when it's electrolyzing while you're sleeping, it's creating these heavy metals and these metal toxins that are going straight to your brain. So I've had many people where, they had to get the dental fixed before they could truly sleep because it was constantly disrupting their brain. Uh, adrenal stress, meaning the people who burn the candles at two ends or the people who have lost sleep over a long period of time, thereby they cannot produce adrenal adrenaline. And without enough adrenaline that we get from sleeping at nighttime and sleeping five straight hours without lifting off your head, uh, your head off the pillow, if we go on without that long enough, now we have an adrenal insufficiency or adrenal problems, which then causes sleep problems. But it's a catch-22, and it just feeds upon itself like Ouroboros eating its own tail. So it's like so many people are so screwed by that because it's like, what do I do? I can't do anything. Well, we can fix that, okay? But first of all, it's determining. I'm going over all these different lists, and when I talk about people of sleep, I ask very specific questions so I can help to determine what type of sleep? Where do I look? How do I fix it? Because some people, it's just about fixing their environment, their room. Some people, it's about, you know, don't eat after 7 p.m. Some people, it's about, you know, just stop drinking three hours before you go to sleep. Make sure you, like, you know, the old days when we were going on a car trip, make sure you go to the bathroom before we get in that car because we're not stopping. Make sure you fully empty the bladder, fully evacuate your bowels before you get in bed. Okay, a lot of times that's been really helped. It'd be great if that's for everybody, but like most people that come to me with sleep problems, it's really deep stuff and it's a bunch of this stuff. Um, uh, general types of insomnia, difficulty falling asleep. So these are one of the questions. Are you having problem falling asleep? Difficulty staying asleep. Typically also one of the big ones that we always know as a liver gallbladder is 3 a.m. This is the one that I, I hear often, most often, which is I went to bed at a good time, I sleep, slept good, and I was tired, and I had a, but then 3 a.m. hit between 1.30 and 3 a.m., usually 3 a.m. People go, it's like an alarm went off and I'm awake and, and I'm like wide awake and I can't go to, back to sleep. What is that? That's crazy. Usually that's the gallbladder. The gallbladder is jammed up and the gallbladder, as that meridian, which is, that's in Chinese medicine, that meridian goes through a part of the brain that is the deep sleep part of the brain and it wakes you up, it pops you out of that. So again, how can, if people have that condition, when we get on things for the gallbladder, the bill of end, the gallbladder end, usually the gallbladder ND, which is this liquid that you take, to, I've had people that have had, you know, decades worth of insomnia and after two nights of being on the gallbladder ND, they're like, whoa, wow, I slept awesome. And I stayed, as long as I take that stuff, that's a gallbladder issue. Because once the gallbladder is cleaned out and the gallbladder is, is it, it helps, then it won't wake you up, okay? In oriental, oriental medicine, the liver and gallbladder are key meridians which influence the head area. Your liver gallbladder is down here, but the, they go through your brain. And the energetic field, in, 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 like I said, in Chinese medicine, those are the biggest things that affect your brain, that affect your head. Difficulty staying at least five hours continuously 
waking up frequently at night, or a combination of all these factors. These are the sleep problems, okay? In oriental medicine, okay, like I said, liver, gallbladder, and adrenals are key. Now, again, the adrenals are related to the kidneys. They also are related to liver, liver, gallbladder. They're related to how we digest our food, but also how our mood is. And in particular, why liver, gallbladder? Because it is the gallbladder that gives you the ability to digest fat, okay? So it's the soap dispenser that makes the dishwasher work, not just the hot water. Hot water just spreads the grease around. You have to have soap. That's what the gallbladder is. Now, why is that important? Because hormones, so what allows you to sleep well and stay in sleep and then wake up feeling refreshed is all about hormones. You have the right hormones that are allow you to stay in sleep. You have... When you sleep really well and you get good sleep, you're producing more hormones, which then give you the ability to go throughout the day. Hormones run everything. Well, hormones are fat soluble. And if you cannot digest fats, and if your liver gallbladder is jammed up, you're gonna be in a hormone storm, which is you don't have enough of one thing, you got too much of the other thing. And again, you tend, it, what, what are you gonna feel it? You're gonna feel it in your sleep. Not able to like shut off and turn off and then pfft, just, you know, that's a good sleep. Like, you're done. That's what's called the parasympathetic dominance. There's two parts of the system. So people that can't sleep, either they were in this problem or this, because not sleeping, creates this problem too, which is sympathetic dominance, which is this fight or flight. That happens when you get up. You're supposed to be in sympathetic dominance. But they get stuck in a sympathetic dominance. There's a whole bunch of things. But see, sympathetic and parasympathetic part of our nervous system are all running on hormones. So the hormones are the puppet master of this whole thing. And what makes the puppet master work is the liver gallbladder. So you can see why the liver gallbladder is the most important thing for sleep, okay? So when we get into food problems, okay, like the very first thing, like I said, which is bad pH. There's a test that you can tell if you have bad pH. Bad pH comes from, okay, you can get these pH test strips, okay? You can get them at a health food store. You can get them from me. And what you do is you take a little strip off of it and first morning urine, which is when you get up, the first time that you get up and, the, and not go back to bed, but get up and I'm going to stay up for the day, that's, you pee on that. So whether you're a girl sitting there or you can pee in a cup and dip it in it, or you can just pass it through the stream, male, female, doesn't matter. And just a little bit of that first morning urine on this yellow strip will either, it will stay that same color or it will turn a color. You want it to turn green. If it stays yellow, you're too acid. If it goes all the way to blue, you're too alkaline. Either way is bad. You want to be in the green zone. And there are things that we can do like the greens mix, the coral calcium. Uh, uh, there's a bunch of things that will push your, so if you are too acidic or too alkaline, either one is bad, there's things that you can take in your body that after a couple days, that will change your pH. And that will then start to change that. And that's one of the top things that we know is affected with sleep. So um, again, the pH, okay? Uh, the deep REM sleep, usually that comes later after these things, but there's a, a, a tranquil, this, this supplement that we can take that actually has different herbs in it, especially um, valerian. Valerian is one that's like, that's a, you know, so we've, everyone's heard about like chamomile. Chamomile tea is like, ah, uh, you drink some chamomile tea and it makes you kind of sleepy. That's nice. That's a very light one. A deeper one, a more heavy duty one, the one, if you drink a, a, a you know, cup of, of valerian tea, you'll feel a little bit like stronger. It's a stronger one. Now, this one's not, doesn't have a whole lot of valerian, so you can even take it during the daytime and it's not going to make you feel drowsy. But it also has another herb in it, which is called Zisiphus. It's a flower over in India. It comes from what's called the jujube tree. That's where they come up with a, that little candy called jujube. There's actually a tree that makes these little fruits that are what they base that on. Okay, but it has a flower. And that flower, when we grind it up and put it into a capsule and you take it, it helps to unscramble the neurotransmitter. It basically is a plant form of your good brain of how it remembers how it works. There's other things that we can also use, and the hemp 
is also very good for that. The hemp and the endocannabinoids. We'll talk about that in terms of with pain and also helping with the, the brain of being able to, the body to be able to relax as well as the brain to be able to kind of be in a state where it's not being forced to turn off. It's remembering what it's like to turn off and not turn off to just kind of go into that healing mode. That's good sleep, okay? Um, the, if we have these heavy metals, like I said, getting it out of the teeth, but also there's um, HM Nano Detox or the um, cilantro. Cilantro is an herb that is, uh, it pulls onto heavy metals. Um, there's a number of different things that we can take. The HM Nano is this nani cilantro and a couple other different herbs that are really well known for detoxifying and taking heavy metals out. The liver gallbladder, okay, uh, support liver ND, the liver um, nano, and then the gallbladder N nano. If I have people that have really, really bad um, sleep problems that are related to the liver gallbladder, a teaspoon of this and a couple teaspoons, so let's say a teaspoon of the liver nano and about three teaspoons of the gallbladder nano, and you can take that in the, you know, during the day. You don't even have to take it at, um, at nighttime. Um, in fact, you don't want to take it at nighttime. You don't want to take it just before bed. You actually want to take it, let's say, after breakfast. And that will prepare you for being able to have your gallbladder not wake you up. Um, another thing is there's, with a really jammed up liver gallbladder, there's what's called the mini liver gallbladder flush. And then there's the master liver gallbladder flush. I always recommend people who want to do this one, don't start with the master one first because it's hard on your body if you've never prepared for it. Usually I tell people, start with the mini liver and there's instructions you can get if you want to get a hold of me, Jason Eagle um, at strategichealing.us. That's my, my website and, and you can email me there and you can request these things anywhere in the world and I'll send them to you. And it has a whole list of you do this, you take this, take this. And uh, usually if, if we really want to do a master and we've never done, you really want to do about a month to three months of the mini one. Because if we do a master liver gallbladder flush, that's the one that is the, the drinking olive oil and Epsom salt and grapefruit and you lay on your left side and all this other stuff. If you have not softened these things up, I've had people that have done that like right off the bat and they are in a lot of pain. I've had people that have done it and they're, they, they, you know, a bunch of stones come out and they feel great. But more than not, if it's your very first liver gallbladder flush, start with the mini first because it helps to soften these things up and it helps to clean. And it also, the mini liver, liver gallbladder flush can also help you to get more energy by sleeping better, which then the more energy that you have throughout the day, the body will be able to detox better. So whatever job you're doing, if you're well slept, you have more energy to do it. Adrenal, so there's the adrenal complex. We take that at breakfast between three or six. And so if we have, you know, we, we suspect that the, so how do I suspect that adrenals are a problem? If you're the person that has to get up three times a night to go pee, you've for sure, and you've been doing that for more than say three months, you for sure have an adrenal problem, which is your adrenaline runs everything, okay? So how do I repair my adrenals? We can take the adrena complex. We can take adaptogen is another type of thing that's helpful for these different types of, of organs. But um, uh, the uh, adrenals repair themselves. The adrenal glands fill themselves up. There are these little tanks that sit on top of your kidneys. They're a gland that hold on to these uh, juices. These juices have to be filled up. So your gas tank doesn't just automatically fill itself up or your Tesla battery. It has to be plugged in and refilled. The law of the body is once we hit the pillow and your bed hits the your head hits the pillow and you're level and you're flat. Now, you're, how did your body know that? Because you have this fluid in your ears that is a level. That's why when you spin around and spin around and then you stop and you fall over and hit the wall, it's because that fluid is still spinning. When a person gets an ear infection, that's why they get, you know, like those, you know, they fall over. It's because that fluid tells you where the floor is, tells you where level is. And so the rule is, is your body was designed to fall asleep, stay, and with your head level on the pillow for five hours, five straight hours. That's the rule. If it gets five straight hours, then the adrenal glands go, oh, we can refill. And that's like, it will refill. 
okay? So, but if you sleep for three hours and then get up because you want to watch some TV or eat some cheese or, you know, move around or something like that or go pee or something like that, you better go back to bed and, and the whole the clock starts all over again. So unless you go and get another five hours, that's it. And what happens typically with most people with like say urinary trouble or pain or something like that is they'll get three and two and three and one, never having a full five. And if you never have a full five, then your adrenals don't work. And again, people, this is one of the top things that's been related to car crashes. Car crashes in terms of drunk driving is big, but you know what's as big? Sleep deprivation. Sleep deprivation, people driving long night trips, driving home from work that fall asleep at the wheel and then crash, they're just as bad. And they, they did studies on that. And, and a sleepy brain is as bad as a drunk brain, just as bad. So, you know, people can go, I'm not drunk driving, but they're sleep drivers. They're sleep deprived. And there's a bunch of people on that road. So how do we get that five straight hours so that we can then produce the adrenaline, okay? There's a trick to that and I can help you with that. But that's, you know, maybe my sleep is related to my adrenals. The pituitary pineal gland, that's deep inside the brain and they regulate growth patterns and also, you know, all kinds of things in their brain, hormones. And one of the hormones that these glands produce is melatonin and melatonin then gets turned into, like I said, serotonin, the happy pill, right? So that has to happen. Like I said, there's two things that go to that. One, if we don't have enough um, sunshine that's reaching in our eyes, and, and, and usually it's about 20 minutes of being outside or something like that, or, you know, right around there, is then that's enough to kind of repair that bank, okay? Um, another thing that disrupts our brain is the screens. The blue light that comes from TVs and these black screens is it disrupts the brain. And so you get people that have, you know, they stayed up and they watched some TV just before they, you know, fell asleep or it's going on all night long while they're, they're sleeping behind their eyes. Their eyes never get dark. And so what happens is they will not produce melatonin. Now we can take melatonin, you can take it as a supplement and that helps. The melatonin is the one that helps you to stay asleep. Usually it's the tranquinol is the one that's like, I can't fall asleep, I can't make my mind stop, I, I'm too fidgety. Take some tranquinol, that helps me fall asleep. The people that it's like, I fall asleep great, but then I wake up, usually that's the melatonin. Hold on. Melatonin is something that gets disrupted. This is jet lag, okay? It's what's called, it regulates what's called the circadian rhythms. Circadian rhythms are when is it daytime? When is it nighttime? Nighttime, be sleepy. Daytime, be awake. You get a power person that flies over to Japan, they can't sleep for three days because the time clock is completely off. The circadian rhythms are completely off. You're going to have people that are, are having that right here. They never flew anywhere, but their brain clock is out of whack. And that's regulated by melatonin. So melatonin is something you can take these drops that you can put under your tongue just an hour before you go to bed. And it is actually melatonin, and it actually will fill the brain up. Anti-infective support, meaning a lot of the gut infections, that's where we get into and that's where we're getting into tracking down if it's a particular parasite, especially, like I said, the ones that follow the phases of the moon. You know it's a parasite if it follows the phases of the moon. Hormonal support, meaning um, my hormones are all out of whack because it's been going on for such a long time. Um, the multipollen we can take, um, the adaptogen, the estrocomplex, which is, estrocomplex is not just, I'm taking estrocomplex right now. Why? Because I'm not trying to build estrogen. Estrogen and progesterone and testosterone and pregnenolone and all of these things are all related together. And estrocomplex has what's called diendylmethane in it, which is really good for muscle production and just health of the body. Um, but it also helps with hormone rejuvenation, which is part of the sleep. Good hormones, you'll sleep well. Sleep well, good hormones. You know, it's you know which comes first, chicken or the egg? They're attached, and so we do. You have to deal with both of them. Digestive problem, okay? Make sure you take your digest. That's digestive enzymes. Make sure if you're going to eat a big meal, I have people going, you know, I work late at night and I got to come home and that's just the way it is. It's, you know, so if you have to eat late at night, keep it lighter, don't eat too big and make sure you take your digestive enzymes, especially the hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid helps to digest the food in the stomach because especially the meat and the, and the harder to digest things, 
um, what will happen is when you, if you eat it too close to falling asleep, you'll then fall asleep and it sits on your stomach. And your digestive system shuts down essentially when we sleep. It's not, it's not completely, but it's not the same level. It's, and if we have a higher to digest things, what will happen is, is nighttime, we will produce lots of waste products. It's very toxic because our stomach acid production goes down. So we may be sleeping with a full stomach, but then we'll wake up that night or we'll have bad dreams or we won't have good restorative sleep. So if we do have to eat later, the rule of thumb is try and stop eating and drinking three hours before you go to bed. If it's within, and even then, if we have sleep problems, make sure you take some digestive enzymes. And if it's earlier than that, meaning eat and then I'm going to go to bed an hour later, make sure we take some good digestive enzymes, just to, especially if it's a heavier meal. Or eat lightly. You know, that's a good way to maintain good weight, which is big lunch, light dinner. Light dinner, especially if we're trying to fix our sleep try and keep it at a light dinner. Intestinal support, meaning if I'm still having digestions, we can take probiotics and things like that. It's very, very helpful. The uh, detox therapies, um, we can do castor oil packs. Um, castor oil packs that we can put on our adrenals and kidneys, which is on the low back. We can, If we have parasites, if that's the thing that's waking up, we can also do a castor oil pack on the belly, on the abdomen. It feels really good and it's kind of like, you know, the warm bath for the little baby. Um, it feels good on the belly, um, but it also helps to detoxify the intestines. And a lot of times, if it's intestinal stuff that's keeping us up, then that helps with that. Also, baths, okay? Don't forget about taking a bath, a, an Epsom salt bath. Four pounds of Epsom salt, stay there for about a half an hour to an hour, and then get in bed. And I've known so many people, even in any condition, no matter what. So let's say even if it's a gallbladder, the magnesium helps the body to relax. Magnesium is a muscle relaxant. And I know so many people, it's like, Jason, I did that Epsom salt and I slept like a baby. That was great. I was, you know, I was tense. I was not I was sleeping good. When I took my Epsom salt bath, boy. And, and so now I do it every night. Okay, I, again, you can't overdo an Epsom salt bath. You really can't. And sometimes people, it's just even a bath, you know, just a hot water bath. It does not have to have Epsom salt and it's just enough to relax people. The Epsom salt provides magnesium into the body, which helps the whole system relax, okay? Um, allergy. So if we tend to have, let's say, allergy type of stuff, that's the Aller Cleanse. The Aller Cleanse has quercetin in it and uh, NAC, N-acetylcysteine. I know people that take, if we're having trouble sleeping as well, there's a couple other supplements that help to do good liver detoxification while we're sleeping so that we don't get woken up by that. That is NAC, N-acetylcysteine. I say maybe about three of those before we go to bed. And then glutathione. Glutathione is another thing that's related to NAC. These are the things that are produced in the liver that the liver uses. So we can take, I know people that have taken their thing is, is they take some trichinol, they take some, um, some magnesium, they take um, a, uh, what, what did I say? Um, the, uh, where is it? It was right on there. Um, oh, God, I just lost it. But anyways, oh, uh, NAC and glutathione. And that's the thing that helps them to just, I, if I do that, I sleep really, really well, okay? Um, because it's handling what's going on in the organs. Um, there's also, again, um, there's, we can have, like, for instance, some um, interference fields. Interference fields, like that's where the mud packs come in. I can have people that have had head injuries or back injuries that are constantly reflexing to these organs, and that's keeping, or body work. For instance, I've had so many people that came in and let me work on them, and it was a bad shoulder, and I rehabbed their shoulder, or their, their spine was tense, and with, you know, have me put them on the table and twisting them and, and moving them. Like, I don't do fluffy buff stuff. I, I real deep tissue massage and body work um, that is structural integration work. And I've had so many people go, wow, like once you worked with me and then taught me how to do the foam roller and stuff like that, that was huge. My body was able to relax and they slept really well. Um, and so sometimes it is the body work. Um, special considerations of avoid uh, drinking coffee and caffeine, avoid difficult to digest foods, uh, the MSG. Now, what do I eat? What are the foods that I should eat if I'm having sleeping problems? What helps me to sleep better? Eat more fresh fruits and vegetables and cultured food, foods like kefir and yogurt and sauerkraut and all this stuff. 
daily walking. That's another thing that people say. It's like, you want to sleep well, do some exercise. And now it doesn't have to do heavy, body, heavy duty exercise. But if you remember, let's say back in the days that you would wake up and do your calisthenics or you do some exercise before you go to bed, you know, like the 1950s, he'd get in his pajamas and he'd do some toe touches and, you know, some jumping jacks and stuff like that before he got into bed. And that helps you to sleep. That still works because it helps to not only kind of flush some stuff out of the body, but it also helps to set up the hormones so that the hormones are ready for you to sleep. So even daily walking, again, you can kill two birds with one stone, which is even in, when it's cold, get bundled up, don't wear your sunglasses, go out there and walk a little bit. During the spring and summer, go out there and walk a little bit. You'll get your sunshine, get a little bit of exercise, you'll sleep better that night. Okay, I mean, it's basic stuff, but it, it's true. Avoid eating after 7 p.m. Eating with two to three hours of bedtime can strain the digestion and affect sound sleep. Avoid drinking fluids right before bed. Get 20 to 40 minutes of sunlight outside daily with nothing between the eyes, like I said, which is the sunglasses. If doing this you still have problems, then we're going to figure out it may be some deeper problems. And again, where we can get into um, help to kind of balance some of the organs and things like that. That's where we get into the supplements and some of the air, other therapies. And then I wanna turn you on to this one too, which is sometimes uh, it helps to listen to things. You know, I know I said, you know, turn the radio off, but uh, there's a channel that I found on YouTube. It's called Nemo's Dreamscapes, and they are awesome. They are amazing. I, I put it on for my wife the other night because, you know, there were some loud things going on in the house, and she just wanted to tune it out. And you go to uh, Nemo's Dreamscapes, and these are these videos. And they go on for, they're like five hours. Some of them are five hours long. Some of them are three hours long. And they are awesome. They have this one, oldies playing on a train, but you're in a dream. So you're listening to oldies, like like old like old radio music, but then they also play the sound of like a train. Um, there's another one, um, oldies playing from another room and it's raining um, with thunder. So sometimes people have also said like, oh, that storm? Like I know a kid that like he went on a vacation with his family and uh, they went to Dominica, which is this island. And I remember asking him, what was the best thing about it? Was it the scuba diving? It was the, and he said, no, actually the best thing was is we stayed in these little huts on the, on the beach and they were little tin roof huts. And every night it would, we would get a little rain. You know, it was kind of like a tropical rainforest type of thing. And it was the pitter patter on that roof. He was like, oh my God. It, you know, it was beautiful there and the you know, sunshine, but it was how I slept. I slept so good. Um, oldies playing from another room and uh, it's raining. Um, this goes on for three hours. Olders playing, oldies playing on another room and it's raining with thunders. Olders playing and you're on a train. Um, time travel radio in the past. Um, let's see, olders playing in another room and it's a snowy wind with a fireplace crackle. So it's this guy, he takes these audio files and he puts them together. And the one where it's like, for instance, in a dream, it kind of sounds like it's a little far off and then sometimes, and it's really good to listen to these with the headphones, but it will start to swirl around your head and it's kind of like, and only for a little bit, but when you're laying there and you're kind of going, I need something to help me to fall asleep. These things are crafted that you can just set it up and you can even put it in the other room where it's not there and it's just barely there. And what it does is it really does help you to sleep. And there's a whole bunch of these different types of videos, but I like this one where this guy put it together, which is, you know, kind of reminds you of when you were a little kid, when the people were in the other room and, and there were noises, but you know, you, that they weren't like direct noises. They were kind of muted noises. And then there was the sound of the, you know, the click clack of the train or the sound of the traffic outside or something like that. Not loud, but just basically. I know a bunch of people that are from New York that kind of go, it has to be noisy. Like when I went out to the country, it drove me nuts because it was too quiet, you know? So there's some of these things that we can do. And, and uh, like I said, Nemo's Dreamscapes on YouTube is, they're great because you can set them up all night long and they'll go three, five hour, hours and, you know, and you'll be asleep before you know it. And, um, uh, and then they just keep going on and on. Um, you can have it set up on a timer where you can turn it off and stuff like that. So learn about those different types of things. They're very, very helpful if you just really want extra help sleeping, those different types of things. Um, as I said, heavy weighted blankets are a great thing. Um, 
the cooler room. People go, you know, I, I like my room really hot. Well, you remember back in the day when people would have that little, you know, the, the stocking cap thing on. It's because the room was cold. And the room's cold is not necessarily just because they were poor. It was because we sleep, we're kind of like animals where like we den up and like to hunker down and like to cuddle up and things like that. And, you know, you, you see animals will sleep together and will jam pile together. Um, we're very similar to that, which is our bodies still have these different types of things based in our brain. And so we can mimic those things, which is making it very dark. That's blackout curtains, making it a little colder rather than even cracking the window, even in the wintertime. Um, I know many, many people, especially the Europeans, that's how a lot of times they sleep like that, which is great big fluffy pillows. When we stay over in Europe, you know, the, the, the little rooms are awesome because you've got these huge down blankets that are literally like 6 to 12 inches tall and you're under this great big huge fluffy thing. Um, and like I said, the rooms tend to be a little bit colder and you sleep really good. When it's really hot, people don't sleep as well. They don't stay asleep. They'll, they'll toss and turn a lot more. So um, these are the tricks of how do we sleep well if we have problems or if we do sleep well, how could I sleep better and why would I want to sleep better? Because it's the number one marker of how well is your day going to be and it's the number one marker of how long and happy am I going to live. If I want to live longer and I want to live happier, work on your sleep and we can make sleep just right. People can, you can make your room just right. And modern people, like like I said, I like to have the TV and stuff. No, get the TV, get mirrors, get all these things out of the room, get the lights out of the room and make it pitch black. And uh, a lot of times people have found like, wow, once I satisfied these things, I really slept awesome. And then my, my whole life felt better. When you start getting better, better consistent sleep, you're not as grumpy, your brain works better, you drive better. You know, we reduce the risk of having these crashes and things like that. But you're just better to people all around. You're smarter. You're wealthier. You're, you, it is. You know, again, people that sleep better are able to think better, make more decisions, and they attract more abundance to them. They do. People that are miserable and, and, and grumpy because they don't sleep very well, they will start cutting things off. They will start, you know, again, people will not be as attracted to them because you can feel that sense of irritation. But a well-slept person is not as irritated. Thereby, they're more successful in all things of life, especially the relationships with other people. Because you can have a person that has a nice smile on their face, but if they're irritated and if they don't sleep well and you see the bags under their eyes, you can tell. You can tell that. And again, makeup doesn't cover that stuff up. And no amount of faking covers that up. You cannot fake um, truly being happy. Some people think you can. You can't. People can pick up on that. And that's the thing is, is you want to be happy to be happy and have other people happy and healthy around it. And sleep is probably the most number one thing to do. So this is Jason Eagle, your natural health authority. Uh, if you want to get a hold of me and get a hold of any of these supplements or anything like that, or, or even have me do a session with you, I can even do Zoom or phone and I can help you. Um, Jason Eagle, 734-985-5891 or strategichealing.us. Till next time, bye-bye. Thank you.